Hello everybody and welcome back. In today's episode, I'm going to be making a armor mask. I'm going to make Deku Daiku, I can't pronounce the name correctly. Uh, it's armored mask from Hero, My Hero Academia. Uh, I've never seen the show, but uh, my youngest star is a huge fan of the show and she loves that character, so I'm going to make that mask for her. I did a little research on the internet. It turns out there's a pattern already existing made from uh, Lawrence Iwood, and I went to his Etsy shop and downloaded the pattern, and so we're going to make that today. So if you guys are ready, Let's get started. All right, there it is. Here's the pattern. Um, and here are the actual sizes, the top of the mask, the bottom, and he's got the directions. It says to bevel these edges. And there's a little bit of instructions right here on the assembly. This is all great. So let's go ahead and take these patterns. Here you go. Now what I've done is I went ahead and spray glued 77 the paper patterns and put them onto a uh, poster board because I like them when they're a little bit thicker. He's the trace, but here are our parts. And what's so great about them too is he's nice enough to label the thicknesses of foam. So for this right here, you guys can see right here, that is uh, six millimeter on this. So let's cut these two parts out. Let's cut these uh, face parts out first. I have some six millimeter foam right here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, lay this down and trace it. What I want to show you really quickly though, if you notice on the patterns, is that when I did my poster board, I went through with a notch cutter and cut the notches out. These are the registration marks. And it makes it a lot easier to do this once it's on poster board. I mean, you could do it with paper, but the poster board makes it stiff enough to where you can hold this down with one finger and it make it easier to trace. All right, now we have everything traced out. Let's cut these guys out. Now when cutting, what I like to do is I just went ahead um, and we're going to just cut out the shapes and separate them. So I like to go like this. There. I always find when you cut these in smaller parts, it makes them easier to cut out because some, you'll edge, some edges will be beveled, some will be 90. So make sure you separate them so it makes it actually easier to cut out. Everyone needs in their foam arsenals a good metal straight edge. The ones I like has the cork backing on them, which helps it from not sliding. And uh, that's what I like to use. So when we're cutting, people always ask me what line if you want to be really accurate, you should always draw on the inside of your Sharpie line because when you're tracing, you realize the Sharpie's on the outside. So to get an accurate representation of your pattern is to make sure it stays on the inside of that Sharpie line. All right, now we're going to move on to the uh, the front mask. As we see in the instructions here, it says to, uh, this gets um, a square cut. This stays square, 90, but these edges get beveled. So we knew that for sure. That. Now for the front here, the front face piece, this gets a bevel. So I'm gonna take the exacto blade. That. There you go. So we have these holes here. I'm going to use a my brass tube will cut these holes out. All right, there we go, we've got the holes cut out. Now our next step is we have all these marks. These are a combination of registration marks, but also there'll be uh, line detail into it. Uh, I can do two ways of doing this. I can take an X-Acto blade, cut it, and heat shrink it. I'll make the gap open up, but uh, I really want them to be pronounced, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a wood burner. I'm gonna do that with my, uh, my metal ruler. All the line details have been burned in with the wood burner. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to unplug this. <laughs> Helpful tip for everybody using a wood burner. Once you're done with this, uh, unplug it and take it away from your workstation. This is always a safety tip because sometimes I'll be working and I'll have it aside and not realize it and I'll go to move something and I'll put a part right into the wood burner. So while this is hot, get it away from your workstation. Let it cool off elsewhere. Now for my favorite part, we're going to glue these guys together. Gonna line it up like so. There you go. Registration marks. Perfect. There you go. Got it. Look at that. That's super cool. It's coming together. So next is, I'm definitely want to do some uh, a little heat curling on this. 
face plate is together, there's a smaller part that goes, which we cut out earlier, here. That goes, I think it's glued on directly here. But I tell you, before we do that, let me take a rotary tool and we're going to clean these edges up, make this a little bit softer. Now put this piece on, line it up, nice and square. Let's try, we can stick these pieces on, line them up. Now that they're glued together, there's some little inconsistencies in the back and the seam, so I'm going to mirror them together by just taking a rotary tool and sand them down just a little bit on the edge. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's what I want, just like that. This looks great. I got this on here, look at this. Uh, these guys kick out a little bit too much of my liking, but let's pin them together and take a look at it, see what it looks like. There it is. I went ahead and tried this on, I realized it's fine. This is actually perfect. I'm just going to glue these guys in, heat shape it, and kind of twist everything out, and it'll be fine. So, because there's a strap that goes behind this that pulls it all together. Okay, now we got the glue on. Let's glue these parts together. Line up nice and flush. Now it's together. Oh, I like that. Dig that. So, now we had, let's do ahead and heat it up just one more time. I'm going to shape it up a little bit. This really came together. I'm really happy with it. This looks great. I kind of prematurely panicked how it was going to go together, but it actually, once it's together, it worked. All I had to do is take a little heat shaping to fix the problems. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do with a thin coat of Mod Podge on this, and then maybe do some quick seal patching on the seams. And I'm going to do, just for speed's sake, I'm going to go outside and coat this with black plastic dip. And then after that, we'll proceed to paint. So that's what we're going to do, do next. All right, you can see now the mask has been sealed. I went ahead and did a really thin coat, a Mod Podge first on the foam before spraying it with plastic dip. And I always found that plastic dip goes on a little bit easier and skins quicker if you have something on top of it on the foam so it doesn't soak up. I want to also point out to you guys, I went ahead and took the top of this mask and I glued it to the top so it matches the thickness. Because originally it was kind of hanging low and kind of rubbing the face. So I moved up and glued it to the uh, thickness which is nice, it opens it up and clears it, and it looks, kind of pulls it all together. So what we're gonna to do today, we're going to paint that with, this is Tamaya Metallic Gray, I'm gonna blow this through my brand new Pache Airbrush. I love these things. There's, as for Pache's, I've just found that you can blow just about anything through airbrushes, they clean easily. So today, we're gonna to go ahead and airbrush this metallic on. Tamaya, uh, paint is relatively thin, but um, I definitely want to thin it down with a little bit of alcohol as I add it to the airbrush just to make it easier to flow on. I pour a little bit in the cup. That's the flow cup. And I take some uh, denitrogen alcohol. I'm going to add a couple of drops. Oh, for Christ's sakes. Ah. All right, round two. <laughs> a little drop in here. There, just not a lot. Because I'm going to thin it down with the alcohol. Now what I like to do is take the my finger in front of this and then kind of back blast it. And you'll see it, the, the, alcohol, the paint bubbling. It's kind of like pushing the air back in. Now you have to kind of help stir the uh, paint and the alcohol together. Just in my needle, open this up a little bigger. There you go. Got nice and even. Now the next step is I'm going to go ahead and go back and paint this black. And I'm going to use some acrylic black. In particular brand I like to use, this is uh, Nova Colors. This is Mars Black. There you go. I realize when I go to get, <laughs> it's time for me to sit down and go through my brushes and buy some new ones because these guys have seen some combat. That's one side. Now again, once I'm done with this, uh, I'm going to hit this with a hairdryer and dry this before I start working on the other side because I've always had a tendency to when I'm working, painting one side, I'll put my hand in this. So to prevent that from happening, I'm going to dry this first. The, the black is all dry, I can handle it now. I wanna, I love these lines, but I wanna accent them a little bit more by painting black into them. 
and I have my Tamaya. I'm going to use a semi-gloss. Sometimes when you get a paint cap that doesn't want to come off. Yeah, yeah, boop. I get the heat just the heat just loosens up the acrylic, which is great. There it is, get the black lines in. Right, like that. Nice. Now, let's get some chrome paint. And I just want to do some chrome highlights, like Nixon's the little bright scratches on it. The silver and the black looks much better. Now, now the next step is uh, I'm gonna have some uh, varnish. This is a uh, clear varnish in a can. I used to use it in a brush, but I love this stuff. Uh, uh, Bill Duran turned me onto this. Uh, the the Kumbacher, this is a uh, gloss, brilliant varnish. I'm going to take this outside and dust this. Everything's sealed. I'm happy with the paint job. So I'm gonna go outside and there it is. Well, that stuff's got a nice little bit of machine. It's all sealed and protected. Can pull this little strap out, pull this thing out. Perfect. That is it. That is the mask. It is done, completed. Um, again, what I would do, uh, I believe he has a strap, which I would just go ahead and take a, um, would rough this phone. If you want to put straps in, I would definitely recommend you go ahead and take a, a rotary tool and rub down the raw foam first and put on elastic. Now, some people use hot glue, but I'm using a lot of goop these days. So my plan would be to go ahead and take this and grind this down a little bit and put a strap. But I'm not going to do that because I want to make sure I get the measurements for uh, for my youngest first before I do that. But anyway, that's pretty much it. That mask, I'd say, is done. Boom. There we go. Oh. Ah. <laughs> uh, apparently, he wears it a lot around his neck. And um, as you guys can see, I put an elastic band on the back. You can put it up on this thing, pull up, and wear as a mask. This is very impressive. I have to say a big shout out to Lawrence Iwood. He made an amazing pattern. If you guys like Hero Academia, definitely go to his Etsy shop because he has numerous patterns from that show and all different characters. I love the fact that I didn't have to make the pattern. It was already pre-existing. Don't forget, guys, there's other cosplayers out there that make amazing patterns. And speaking of patterns, you should go to my website, eviltedsmith.com, where I have numerous patterns. If you're new to cosplay, I want to do basic helmets and shoulders and armor I, and helmets. I have patterns for you in my store. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. And if it's your first time watching my video, don't forget to subscribe. And this video is for my live stream. I do every Monday and Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here on twitch.tv slash Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you back next time right here on Evil Ted Live.